Bible says that we love him because he first loved us. Amen. We have a loving God, a God who saw beyond our faults, who saw our needs, who loved us in spite of ourselves. Amen. How many here really here to praise him this morning? How many know that he is worthy? to be praised, that he has loved us in spite of all of our unlovableness. Amen. Amen. I don't know about you, but I was unlovable. Amen. And sometimes I still am. Amen. But he loves me anyway. And because he has loved me, I love him. I love him forever. Amen. Amen. I am excited. It's always exciting to come and worship here at Northeast Bible Church. Uh, we are so blessed to have uh, such, a, such a blessed and talented music ministry, and we ought to give God some praise for those that minister in song. Amen. Amen. Dr. Greg is doing a wonderful job, and uh, we're looking at all of the choir members and the band members. Thank you for what you do in lifting up the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 All right, and we are also, uh, we know that our pastor is not here today, and Elder Bowles is out as well, and so we want to pray for them as they travel, amen? Bless them. Come on, let's lift up their name before the Lord right now. Father, we thank you for keeping them wherever they are, amen, in Jesus' name. We also want to just acknowledge our First Lady who is here today, amen? Sister Sonia Rice is here. Amen. Amen. She is so faithful, so talented, so wonderful. Amen. She does a great job here at the church. And then my first lady is here today. Amen. Amen. If you didn't know that she's the one with the hat over here on the left. Amen. <laughs> I think she's trying to hide, but I'm not going to let that happen. Amen. God has blessed me with a good thing. And we're going to let let the whole world know about it. Amen. 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 And so we are, we are so blessed and, and just uh, enjoy the opportunity to come and share the Word of God with you again today. Uh, our message is going to come from the book of Luke chapter 4, and we're going to be reading a passage there in just a moment. And so uh, as we think about who God is and what He's done for us, we are to be grateful for his son, his son who who's came and died on a cross for our sins. I know you've already heard it, but we can't say it enough, amen, because he loved us so much, he came and gave his life for us, and because he gave his life, we can live, we have life, amen, amen, amen. If you would, why don't you stand, and we're going to read a couple of passages this morning, and then we're going to uh, pray and then come and share what the word means to us this morning. Amen? Amen. Amen. If you're there in Luke chapter 4, I want you to uh, hold that place, but also want you to uh, look at Isaiah 61. Isaiah 61, Luke chapter 4, beginning at verse 16 through verse 21, and then uh, Isaiah 61, 1 through 3. Amen? Amen. It's a good day this morning. Amen. I'm always excited when I see people get baptized. Amen? It lets me know that God's power is still working. Amen. 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 And so, if you're there at Luke chapter 4, beginning at verse 16, uh, reading out of the New King James, he says, uh, so he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. And he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah, and when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor." He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, 
and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Then when he closed the book and gave it back to the attendant and sat down, the eyes of all who were in the synagogue was fixed on him, and he began to say to them, today, somebody say today. today. This scripture is fulfilled in your hearing, in your hearing. Just so we would have a little bit of more context of uh, this passage, I want to read from Isaiah 61, where Jesus chose his passage. Amen? In Isaiah 61, the verse beginning at the beginning, at the first verse, he says, uh, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound. Verse 2, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn. And I'm going to add verse 3, to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes. Anybody can use a little bit of that the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. Father, we thank you for giving us your word this morning. We thank you because you do all things well. Now, Lord, as we have assembled ourselves in your sanctuary, you have promised us that where any two or three are gathered in your name, that you would be in the midst. And so we welcome you this morning. Holy Spirit, have your way in this place. Lord, use me as only you can. Help these lips of clay to proclaim your good news, your gospel to your people. For, Lord, it's all about you, and it's not about us. And we want to give you the glory. All of the praise, all of the glory belongs to you this morning. Lord, as we thank you for what you're doing, Lord, we already realize what you've already done, but somebody needs you right now. Somebody needs you even as we assemble together in the sanctuary. Which you bless as only you can. Somebody needs salvation this morning. Somebody needs to be helped through a time of darkness. Would you do it in Jesus' name, we pray. Amen and amen. All right, you may be seated. God bless you this morning. As you know, we are still preaching through the disciples' journey, and this is a lesson number nine in the book that we are using. And even though we're not in growth group session right now, I would encourage you to continue working through the material in the disciples' journey. Amen? Amen. For, you know, I, I, know, I know us, and I know uh, whenever we feel like we get a little break, we, we might want to take it. And so uh, I just want to pray that you would continue to work through the material uh, because we're going to keep preaching the, the material. Amen? And so as we are preaching, I would that you would continue to just work through that material in your growth group book. Amen. All right. And so this morning, the reason uh, I read a little bit more from Isaiah 61 is I think it helps to give us some background of the passage that Jesus had selected. And so if we understand the context of Isaiah 61, the entire chapter, it helps us to understand why Jesus chose this one in order to speak about himself. Amen? Amen. Uh, Y'all can say amen every now and then anyway. Amen? Y'all so quiet, I, I, I started to say, okay, which way do I need to be preaching? Do I? <laughs> You know, the old preacher used to say, hello, lights. Hello, all. amen. And so, uh, we, uh, if you say amen, I know you're still here. Amen. All right. All right. Well, it was uh, Isaiah 61. It was 
hard times and dark days in Israel. Sin had caused them to be separated from God. And uh, when you study the book of Isaiah, all of the chapters before began to show you the judgment that was brought on Israel in the previous chapters. And yet here in Isaiah 61, restoration is promised for the future. And look, they're still in a dark time. It's 100 years before they will go into captivity in Babylon, and then another 70 years before they are restored unto the land. Amen? All right, I'm still checking to see if you hear. Amen? All right. In their darkest hour, and while they're still facing difficult days ahead, God sends a message of, a de of deliverance to encourage their souls. You see, God doesn't wait until he takes you out of the situation before he gives you some good news about the future. Amen? I don't know, somebody may be going through a dark situation this morning, but I've got some good news. God has not forgotten about you this morning. Amen? God knows what his people are going through, and he knows what's up the road ahead. And though it may be dark right now, light is coming in the morning. Amen? You may see that light at the end of the tunnel, and, and I can promise you, if you trust in Jesus, it's not a train. Amen. He cares enough to remind us that he will never leave us nor forsake us when we trust in him. Amen. Amen. That's the context that we find Isaiah 61 in, and verses 1 through 3 gives us the content of the message. Amen. He says, uh, Isaiah actually writes this. He says that he's anointed to preach the good tidings. You know, you can still have good news in bad times. Well, it ought to be a better amen than that somewhere. It ought to be, you ought to be glad that you can receive good news in bad times. Can I just tell you right now, we're not in the best of times in the United States. Uh, it, it, it's some bad times that we're going through right now. But there are some good news in the midst of bad times. Amen. He says he's anointed to preach the good tidings. And the anointing simply says that the Holy Spirit is available in adverse circumstances. You know, you can be in the middle of a difficult situation, but God is still present to help you through it. Amen. Amen. Somebody ought to be glad about the fact that God doesn't abandon us while we are in our adverse circumstances. There's some good news that's coming here from the Godhead. It's coming from uh, God the Father, and he's going to use God the Son, who's anointed by the Holy Spirit, to bring the good news. Somebody ought to be a witness somewhere. He is sent to bind up the broken hearts, and lets us know that there's healing for the hurting. Anybody hurting today? There's balm for the bruised. There's medicine for the mind. Oh, I just say that again. So many people now, I work as a chaplain at the hospital, and we got so many people that are coming in that are messed up in their mind. But can I tell you, there's some medicine for the mind this morning. His name is Jesus. Amen. He, there's restoration for the rejected. So many people feel like they're rejected and they, they've been refused and, and, and they feel like they'll never get another chance. But Jesus provides restoration for the rejected. Amen. There's peace for the persecuted. Somebody might not know the difference between persecuted and prosecuted. Amen. See, Persecuted means that you're not guilty of what they're trying to do to you. Amen? Some of us are prosecuted because we are guilty of what we've done. But God gives you some peace in the midst of you being persecuted. Anybody ever done you wrong? I, I got one hand that, that went up in the house. I, maybe I need to preach at the church down the street because I, I know I've been done wrong every now and then. Anybody ever been done wrong in your life? Oh, okay, it was a few more of y'all after all, amen. 
but, <laughs> but, but he, he can provide peace in the middle of your persecution, whatever you're going through. Amen. He can provide consolation for the confused. I've already said there's so many confused people today. We don't understand what's going on. We, we, we're trying all kinds of things, and we're not getting the results that we expect, and so it leaves us confused. But God can console us in the middle of our confusion. Text says that he can proclaim liberty to the captives and opening of prisons for the bound. God can open doors of joy when they are locked by sorrow. Anybody going through anything this morning? Are, are you going through a time where you're in sorrow and you, you can't seem to shake it? Well, God can open doors of joy for you in the midst of your sorrow. He can give you breakthroughs when, when, when your situation might cause you to break down. He can give you victory when you really, really feel like a victim. His sin, your sins may want to shut you down, but God can lift you up. God can lift you up in the middle of whatever you're going through this morning. He's able to do exceeding and abundantly above what we all ask or think. Verse 3 tells us that God has set an appointed time to bring them out of mourning. You see, although Israel is still in, in the darkness, God promises, I can bring you into the light. Listen, I've discovered God does some of his best work in darkness. Have you ever noticed that plants seem to grow faster overnight? How flowers bloom overnight? You're looking at buds one evening, and the next morning they're a beautiful bouquet of flowers. God does some of his best work in the dark. Seem like kids get taller overnight. I know I, we looked around and looking at our kids and seem like overnight they, they grow two or three inches. I, I don't know how that happened, but it looked like they would get taller overnight. You know, our bodies are rested and recharged overnight. Babies are conceived overnight. Listen, I, I don't understand it, but the worst sinners, you, I, I knew you was going to get that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good things happen overnight. Oh, yeah, yeah, I, I got it. Northeast, I got it. I really got I wonder sometimes. <laughs> but listen, I don't understand how he does it, but the worst sinners are saved while they're still in the dark. I'm telling you, God does some of his best work in the dark. Listen, there may be a sinner here this morning that needs to know that right now. It may be midnight in your life, and, and it's still dark right now. But when the clock strikes 12 midnight, listen, it's officially a new day. And the S-O-N is coming up in the morning. Oh, you, you need to get that. Whoever you are this morning, you may be in your darkest hour, but the Son of God can lift you up in the middle of your problem. He can bring you out of everything that you're in right now. Do I have an amen somewhere? He's, he does his best work in the dark. There's, there's somebody who, who maybe you're not in your sin, but, but you're going through some things. You, you don't know how God is going to work it out. You don't know why things are so dark right now. You don't understand why all the problems seem to come all at once. But listen, weeping may endure for a night, but joy will come in the morning. I ought to get a witness somewhere. Anybody ever been through anything? Was he faithful to guide you through? Did he walk with you while you were in the middle of it? He's able to keep you in the middle of your problems. Joy will come in the morning. The text says he promises beauty for ashes, joy for mourning, praise for heaviness. And he does this to transform those who mourn into trees of righteousness. Well, what are trees anyway? Trees have strong roots, and they have strong trunks. Trees provide shade and shelter for all who come under their protective branches. Trees can take poisonous carbon dioxide 
and turn it into life-giving oxygen in his place. And even when a tree dies, it dies standing up. <laughs> Come on, help me somebody. Help me this morning. God wants us to be trees of righteousness. He wants us to have strong roots so we don't, we're not easily moved from the foundation of his word. He wants us to have strong trunks so that we don't break easily when the winds of adversity blow. He wants us to proclaim shade and shelter for all who come under the covering of Christ. He wants us to take toxic situations and produce life-saving information that can save the worst of us by the power of Jesus Christ. Even when we die, he wants us to stand tall. Oh, I'm, I'm preaching better than you saying amen. <laughs> come on, come on, come on. Let's bless the Lord this morning. He's good. And all the time, God is good. Well, Isaiah 61 gives us the context of the message. And it gives us, gives us the content of the message. But it's in Luke chapter 4 that we get the consummation of the message. You see, what was promised in that Isaiah 700 years before was not delivered until we get to Luke chapter 4. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captive, recovery of sight to blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and then to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. In Luke chapter 4, Jesus reads this prophecy and tells his audience, Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. In other words, Jesus declares, this is the moment. I am the man who fulfills this message. Jesus personifies the text. He takes all that was promised, and he begins to embody everything that was there. God allowed Isaiah to write the prophecy, but only Jesus can fulfill the promises. The details, uh, the prophecy deals with more than social issues. It deals with soul issues. Amen? It really deals with soul issues. And although Isaiah was a good man, it takes more than a good man to deal with soul issues. It takes a God man. Somebody ought to call his name this morning. It's Jesus. Jesus is more than a good man. He is the God man. Jesus is 100% man and 100% God. He's 100% flesh on his mother's side, but he's 100% Holy Spirit on his father's side. He's older than his mother, and he's the same age as his father. He's human enough to feel our sins, and yet he's God enough to cleanse us from our sins. It ought to be an amen somewhere. He has felt what we feel. He's been depressed like we can get depressed. He's been in the Garden of Gethsemane. He said, Father, if it be thy will, let this cup pass from me. Said that he prayed so hard that he sweated great drops of blood. You talking about depressed? I don't know if you ever sweated great drops of blood. But that's a down time. But yet he said, not my will, but thy will be done. He, 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 was, he got tired like we got tired. So Hebrews 4, 15 and 16 tells us something. He tells us that we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but in all points tempted as we are, yet he was without sin. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we can obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Anybody need a little grace this morning? Anybody going through something this morning? Just understand Jesus had already went through it too. Whatever your situation is, he's already felt the same things that you feel. Just because he was 100% God as well as 100% human, 
he didn't, that doesn't mean that he doesn't feel what we feel. And we need to know and recognize that he is available to us to plead our case for us and to change our life for us. Amen? Well, I need to close, but uh, there's some good news this morning. And the gospel uh, is good news. That's what the gospel means. Notice when Jesus said in verse 21, he says, today. Somebody say today. He says, today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Listen, today is in the present tense. It's always today. Yesterday is gone. Tomorrow I never get here. Guess what? It's always. Oh, <laughs> I got, I got, I, thank you, sister. I, she with me on the front row. Yesterday is already gone. Tomorrow I never get here. It's always. Hey. <laughs> Amen. It's always today. And, and, and that's what's so, uh, what's so unique about God's Word. You know, His Word is ever-present to work and do what needs to be done right now. Somebody say right now. Somebody may be in a dark place this morning, but listen, uh, when we're in a dark place, we can lose our perception and our perspective. Sometimes we're not sure what God is doing. And we're not sure where we're going. I don't know about you, but when I'm in a dark room, even if it's a familiar room, I can't move like I normally move when the light is on. I'm walking with my arms outstretched, trying to feel what, for the light switch. And I'm in the dark, and, you know, and nothing worse than being in the dark except to be in the dark and in pain. Because, you know, when you're in the dark reaching for the light, every now and then you might stub your toe. And now, you, now not only are you in the dark, but, but you're in pain as well. And, and, and so, you know, uh, there, there are times when we are walking through life like that. We're walking through the dark, our arms are outstretched, and we're searching for the light, and we're trying to avoid more pain. You don't understand why that thing happened the way that it did. You don't know what's going on and what's going to happen next. You're wondering if things will ever get back to normal. Do I have a witness anywhere? Can I give you some good news this morning? When you walk with your arms outstretched, Jesus can pick you up. When you're looking for the light, Jesus tells us in John 8, 12, I am the light of the world, and he who follows me shall not walk in darkness. Do you need a little light this morning? If you're tired of the pain in your life, he can heal the hurt like nobody else. Anybody know that that's, tr that that's true this morning? Amen, amen. Y'all looking at me like, okay, I wish you'd hurry up so I can go on home. Y'all just look so. <laughs> but I, I, I'm here to tell you that Jesus is able, whenever we're going through anything, he's able to pick us up He's able to turn on the light, and he's able to heal. He's able to dust you off. I, I remember when our children were little, you know, they, every now and then they go outside, and, and all of a sudden you hear this, 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 you know, how you know your children's cry? You know, everybody in the neighborhood can be crying, but you can hear your child's cry. Amen? And, and, and I'm glad that God can hear my cry. He knows exactly where I'm at and what I'm going through. He knows how to come and rescue me when I've fallen down and I can't get up. Amen. He, he knows how to wipe off the little boo-boo that happened. Amen. When our children was little, I don't know why it was, but whenever they got hurt, they came looking for mama. Yeah, I could be in the house too, but... <laughs> but they... They came looking for mama, and maybe because mama was going to wash it off, and then she was going to kiss it. Amen. I was going to look at it. I might dust it off a little bit. <laughs> it wasn't no difference between what I did and she did. They just felt better after <laughs> she kissed it. Amen. Jesus can kiss you where you hurt. He can come in right where you need him. And he can make it feel like 
even though nothing has changed, he can make it feel like everything's going to be all right. Look at your neighbor and say, everything is going to be all right. Because Jesus loves me and I love him. Amen. Amen. You see, he can heal your hurt like nobody else. And how do I know? Look at verse 18 again, one last time. Not only did Jesus proclaim this passage passionately, he practiced it personally. Well, preacher, what do you mean? Look at it. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. Jesus was both Jesus and Christ. Christ means the anointed one. Christ wasn't his last name, but he was flesh and spirit. He was Jesus, the anointed one. And so the passage applies to him because he is that one who is Jesus Christ. He says he came to preach the gospel to the poor. Look, Jesus became poor. He left all that he had in glory so that you could become rich. See, he didn't just say he came to preach to the poor. He became poor so that you could become rich. Amen? So he, he personalizes the passage. And then he says, he sent me to heal the brokenhearted. You know, some scholars say that the reason he died on the cross early, before the others died, they said it may have been because his heart stopped on the cross. His heart was broken so yours could be healed. The thing that he preached about, he actually did. He fulfilled it even after he proclaimed it. He, his heart was broken so yours could be healed. And listen, he said to proclaim liberty to the captives. He didn't just proclaim it. He was taken captive so you could go free. See, it wasn't just him saying the word. He lived it out so that you could have what he's preaching. Listen, then he says, recovery of sight to the blind. Luke 22 and 64 says that he was blindfolded so you could see. He went through everything that he's preaching so you could get the victory. Oh, it ought to be some joy in the house this morning. See, he wasn't one who just talked the talk. He walked the walk. And then he says to set at liberty those who are oppressed. He was oppressed and he was afflicted that we could be saved. Amen? That we could come out from whatever the situation is. Listen, there's some good news this morning. It's still today. And the scripture is still being fulfilled in your hearing. Jesus is not intimidated by our darkness. He's not, uh, he's not upset with the fact that we have made mistakes along the way. He sees just as clearly in the dark as he does in the day. Now, that ought to be a word to somebody this morning. <laughs> Whatever we're doing, whether we're in the darkness or in the day, he sees it all. But guess what? In spite of all of our sins, he still gives us grace. Oh, somebody ought to be glad about that this morning. He still extends his grace to us that we can be saved. He's able to save those that are in the gutter. He's able to reach us wherever we might be. He's able to bring us out from where we are. You know, the next time you're looking at somebody else and you have an opinion about where they are, you ought to just think back. You ought to just think back to where you were. Amen. You may not be where you ought to be, but somebody said, thank God. I'm not where I used to be. He's saving us. Listen, he, 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 we are saved positionally. We are being saved progressionally. And we will ultimately be saved all because he's not only man, but he is God. Amen. He is both God and man, all wrapped up in one. I don't know how God did it, 
but I'm glad he did. Amen? We don't have to understand everything. You know, sometimes we can get a little bit too intellectual. Amen? We got to try to understand. But you don't have to understand everything. Just receive it by faith. Amen? That's all he asked. He said, I just want you to believe and be saved. Amen? Isn't that good news this morning? We ought to be glad that God can turn our midnights into a bright morning. Lord, as we come to a close, Father, I pray this morning that someone would take the simple message. And Lord, I know that we kind of went through it a little fast, but Lord, I pray that your word, you've promised that your word would not return void. And so as you have given us your word, as you have allowed me to deliver your word, Lord, I, I know I'm not uh, the best at what we do, but Lord, I'm available. And I'm simply trying to do what you have told me to do. Lord, I pray that this word would go into someone's heart that would help us to see who Jesus really is, that he is both man and God, that he's the only one that's able to approach us for our sinfulness because the Father won't even look on sin. Because of his humanity, he's able to come to us and take us and touch us in our sins. And yet at the same time, he's able to approach the Father because he is God. He's able to approach him because even though the Father won't look on sin, Jesus is able to take our imperfections. He's able to approach the Father because he is God. And God the Father will accept him approaching and praying for us. He's a unique individual. There's nobody that's ever been like him. Nobody that ever will be like him. He is both God and man. And for that, Lord, we thank you that you sent your son, that he came wrapped up in flesh, and yet still, almighty God, we thank you, we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.